Hello bookish friends, welcome or welcome back. I'm Elizabeth. This is Reading Riley where we like to read Riley, not take ourselves too seriously and have some fun with books. And today we're doing a thriller reading vlog. So as of recording this intro, I've already read all these books, but I wanted to give you a better intro into this video because I didn't do it before. I'm reading three books in this video. The first one is recommended by another booktuber and that is Tangerine by Christine Mangan. Love this cover. It's so freaking gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. This is a thriller about obsession set in the 1950s in Tanger Tangerine in Tangier, Morocco. The next book I'll be reading in this vlog is Bunny by Mona Awad. You can't really tell how pretty this color is, but it's actually a really gorgeous cover and I loved All's Well, so I just wanted to read more from Mona Awad. So I read this one. It's very divisive. Some people absolutely hate this. A lot of people didn't even finish it, which I totally get, but you're going to have to watch more of this if you want to find out my opinion. But definitely, definitely an interesting book. And then the last book I'm reading for this vlog is When the Reckoning Comes by Latanya McQueen. It was on my TBR from before that, but it's also on the Goodreads Choice Awards list. And I can't remember if it was on there for thriller or horror, but you will find out because I will also be going over my reaction to just the thriller and the horror categories of the Goodreads 2021 Goodreads Choice Awards. Oh, by the way, in this next clip I'm about to show you, I was playing with makeup and bronzer and I had some unsuccessful experimentation. So excuse my face in general. Thank you. Um, what's happening right now? We are, we are, I am reading a book. Welcome to my channel where um, I tell you that I'm reading a book and you're surprised. <gasps> what? No, I'm crazy. Okay, I just started Tangerine. <laughs> this is by Christine Mangan. This was suggested to me by well, not to me, but to everyone by, by April over at getting Higgy with it. You know, I looked it up on Goodreads today and it has kind of a lower score. I think it's like, it has like a 3.3 or something like that. So it's a little bit, a little bit disheartening there, but I trust April. She and I have very similar rating taste as far as thrillers go. So I'm going to give it a go. This is a book about obsession. It is set in the 50s. We have dual timeline, dual perspective. You have these two women, April and Lucy. April is English, I think. And Lucy's American and they met in college. They became fast friends, besties for the four years they were in college. And then current day, Jesus, Denver. Why are you always causing shenanigans? April is now living in Tangier, Morocco with her new husband. Lucy just shows up out of the blue and I'm getting the impression she's afraid of Lucy. Something happened at the very end of their college career together that went awry. I have no idea what happened. I started this today. I think I'm like probably, I'm probably like 20% into it right now. So far, it's good. So far, we're just getting the backstory. It's going back and forth between timelines. It's going back and forth between April and Lucy's perspective. The narrator is really great on audible because the the accents are just spot on it seems like they have some secrets april seems really timid and just kind of scared and she doesn't want lucy to think that her husband's an asshole but it seems like he is she's also like not saying some things so there's a lot up in the air that i don't know what's happening sometimes i forget that it's set in the 50s and then there'll be some like random comment about lucy not having a husband like it's <gasps> you don't have a husband you're in your 20s? How dare you? Stuff like that. So I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. We're in the 50s. Anyway, so I'm going to read this and a couple other books. I don't know what yet. I have a math test coming up this weekend. So I really have to spend some time on that today. So I'm probably not going to finish this today by any means, but I just figured I'd get it started, get it going and let y'all know what's happening. So I will check back in at some point. I am in the middle of my walk. I've been trying to walk every day at least like three or four miles. Ever since I stopped carrying the mail, I feel like I literally used to walk 15 miles a day and I maintained my weight because I ate whatever the fuck I wanted. Now that I've stopped walking that much, I'm literally still eating whatever I want. My body's like, what the fuck are you doing? 
So I was like, I need to get on top of this and start walking. And so I'm kind of been exploring my neighborhood, found this little bridge here that I absolutely love. So I this little path in this like forested area, making sure there's no dead bodies in the creek below. Just doing my, my due diligence, my service to my community. Anyway, I am just over halfway through with this book right now. Also, excuse my adult acne. I'm 34 years old and I have <laughs> acne. Ah, the irony is I didn't have acne as a teenager. It's such a shame. Anyway, oh, I, I need to tell you guys, I forgot to tell you guys, at the very beginning, the first page of this book, they're pulling a man's body out of the water dead body we don't know if he's murdered we don't know who it is we don't know any of that so this entire time we're wondering whose body was that what's going on and then also we find out that Alice has some mental health issues in her past there's stuff going on with her past and with Lucy's past that we're learning as we go but she's definitely had some issues with her mental health and so that's being kind of used as a plot device so if you don't like that in books you might not like this story so Totally up to you to decide. It doesn't really bother me when it's used, unless it's used like a certain way. But as a reader, we are trying to figure out if Lucy is actually manipulative, if she's actually obsessed with Alice, or if this is just something Alice made up in her head. So it's giving me Alice Feeney vibes. I'm enjoying it so far. I am enjoying it so far. So we'll see what happens. I have to, I have my stats test tomorrow. I've been killing myself. I spent like seven hours last night studying for stats and I feel like I'm going a little bit loony myself, but um, you know, gotta get it done. It's Friday today. Tomorrow's Saturday. I have my test Sunday. We're gonna be cleaning out our garage because we're basically hoarders at this point. We have hardly any storage in our house. And so every time we don't know where to put something, it goes in the garage. So I may literally need professional help. <laughs> That's gonna be a challenge. I don't know if I'll show you guys that. We'll see, because <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, not gonna lie. And so I'm gonna continue walking, reading this book, and we will go from there. I'll probably check in with y'all as soon as I finish it, and then we'll move on to the next. We just need to make sure that this is not a body. Is it a body? <laughs> Hey, I just finished Tangerine by Christine Mangan. It was okay. It was okay. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. I wanted to be fooled. I was not fooled. There really weren't any twists. If it's just a story for the sake of the, the story, then yes, it was fine. But it's not what I look for in a thriller. I wanted to gasp out loud. I was waiting for that last minute, that last twist that I didn't see coming, and that just didn't happen. We do have some messed up characters in here that are interesting, I will say that. And the story in general, it wasn't bad. Like, it was compelling. I never didn't want to read it, but I never was obsessed with it. Had You know, it didn't have that fast pace that I look forward to. It didn't have those twists. So while I did compare this to Alice Feeney, I feel like both of them try to do the same things with their books. Alice Feeney is more successful with that, I feel like. It reminded me of Sometimes I Lie, like that kind of vibe, but Sometimes I Lie is definitely a better version of that. I probably will keep this copy because it's just so damn gorgeous. I just think this book is beautiful, but I don't know that I'll read it again if I'm being honest overall just okay three stars so now we're gonna move on to the next book and I don't know what it's gonna be yet I've made a list of books that I would need to get through by the end of the year and there's a little bit of fantasy on there like I feel like I haven't read much fantasy lately and I'm kind of craving that but I don't think that's gonna jive for this video you know what I really want to read bunny I think bunny is gonna be the next one by Mona Awad I read All's Well and really liked it. So I'm interested to see if I like that one too, or if that was just a one-off for me. I won't start it until later today because I really, I need to study. And I also need to film another video so that you guys have something for this week to watch. But I'll get back to you guys when I can. Okay, y'all. I need to catch you up on where I'm at. Okay, so let me just say like life things. I took my exam. I'm pretty sure I fucking aced it. I spent 
probably 12 hours studying for it, so I hope I did. But gosh, it just takes so long to get that into my skull. Sometimes, you know, with math, it's just not for me. But I think I did a great job. Very excited about that. Today is Monday, by the way. <laughs> we cleaned out our garage. I didn't know how bad it was. Like, I knew it was bad, but like until I looked at the before and after pictures, I'm not gonna show you guys, it's so embarrassing. But now we have a fully functional garage. We can actually pull our cars in there, <laughs> so that's nice. Anyway, I've been reading Bunny, so I'm just about halfway through. Not even halfway through, oh gosh. I haven't been doing much reading, obviously. But I will say that this is definitely, it's reminding me of Stepford Wives. We're following Samantha and she is very much an outsider. She's in this MFA program. I very much identify with her because she's very realistic, but some would call pessimistic. She's edgy. She is, you know, not necessarily secure in herself, but definitely sees like the darker side of things. And then she's in this MFA program and, with this group of girls who are called who call themselves bunnies. And they refer to each other as bunny. Oh, bunny, I love your earrings. Bunny, I love your skirt. Bunny, I love this. Oh, I just love you, bunny. This is her final year. There's someone who overlooks her as she's working through her thesis. And she had some kind of relationship with him in the past that we don't really know that much about. And these bunnies are just so fucking annoying. She is annoyed by them too. She has her best friend, Ava, who is like this like punk rock chick and cool as fuck like i want to be ava but the bunnies invite her to join them for their workshop and then some really weird shit starts happening like i said stepford wives type shit like there's some kind of like fantasy or mm, magical realism type of element in here very weird again but i will say i just love mona awad's writing like mona awad makes me want to write and i've thought like i've had thoughts in my mind about like maybe one day writing a novel, you know, but I've never actually written anything like that. So, but if I did, I would want it to be like Mona Awad because, and I'm not saying anything about this book in general, like I can't judge it yet because I haven't finished it, but her writing, it's intellectual without pretense. And maybe there's a little bit of that, but not so much that it's like over your head, but it's also really weird. And it almost makes you feel like you're in this lucid dream where you're not sure what's real and what's not, but you're still able to follow along with the story. And she has some of the most beautiful similes that I've ever heard. I love a good simile. And I keep like thinking back about nothing but blackened teeth. That had some really nice simile and metaphor in there too, but it was so much, it was almost like 90% simile and metaphors to the point where you don't know what the hell is going on and not in an intentional way. Like they want you to keep up, but you just, you have to be smart enough or you have to really study it. And this is in a way where it's like, you still kind of know what's going on. You know that you're not supposed to fully know what's going on. So it's not like you are feeling like the book is going somewhere without you and you're not getting out of it what you should be getting out of. But there's just enough of those like really beautiful simile thrown in there to like make it more magical, make it more ethereal, make it more dreamlike. And her simile puts you in a place, it puts you in a feel. And I love the beauty in that, the creativity in that. So I'm really enjoying her writing. It's definitely getting on the weird side with the whole Stepford thing. They're doing this thing that is, in the bunny's words, trans sending art in the written form. Like it's beyond any kind of novel or poetry that you could write. It is completely different. And you know, I don't know where this is going, but she's kind of getting swept up into their bunny dumb, bunnyhood. I don't know. It's from the first person perspective. So we know her thoughts and then we know her behaviors and they are very disconnected. What she's thinking is one thing and then what she, how she's behaving is totally differently. And you can kind of see how their draw, their effect has the power over her. And it's also creating this tension between her and Ava because she's only complained about these bunnies to Ava. And now Ava is like, why are you hanging out with them? Like what's going on? So I won't say that's all of the plot that I'm gonna give you. I'm not gonna spoil this for you, but I'm enjoying it so far. I really need to get back to it. But guess what happened today in the 2021 first round for Goodreads Choice Awards have finally come out. I feel like I've been waiting for this forever and they finally came out. So I wanna go through them really quick with you since I've, since I've got you here. Let's talk about it. Okay, 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 let me find it. Let's look at the mystery thriller category. I'm gonna screen record. So first we have Billy Summers by Stephen King. 
I haven't read this. Don't know anything about that. Not a huge fan of Stephen King. We have Sally Hepworth, The Good Sister. I've heard about this, but not much. Interested. Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. Yes, please. I'm glad that's on there. Barely missed the margin. It ends in November. Every Last Secret by A.R. Tor. Don't know this one. And it, but it does seem familiar. I don't know. Next, we have The Push by Ashley Audrain. That one... I didn't love it. I know a lot of people do love this book. And if it won, I wouldn't be upset. But um, I just thought I was led to believe it was more thriller and it's more drama, even though there are some really dark kind of themes within it. Uh, it didn't really do anything for me. And then we have The Survivors by Jane Harper. I have no idea what this is. Maybe I need to look into that. The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. I didn't even realize this came out in 2021, but I did read it and I didn't like that one either. Uh, I felt like if it hadn't been compared to Jane Eyre, I would have been okay with it. But the comparison, I didn't think the retelling was good. So it ruined it for me. Local Woman Missing. I'm so glad this is on here. I absolutely loved this book. I thought it was super twisty, engaging, fast paced, multiple perspective, multiple timeline, fun read. The last thing he told me, I own this one, but I've never read it. So maybe I need to do that. And then we have We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker. No idea what this is. It looks like it would be historical fiction or something. I don't know. And the next one we have is The Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead, which I was led to believe was more literary. So I never read it or was interested in it. Hmm. Okay, and then the next one's Razor Blade Tears, another one I own, but I have not read. Um, but I've heard great things. But also I've heard maybe there's more drama in that. Um, then we have The Maidens by Alex Michaelides, which I also enjoyed, and The Plot by Jean Hanf Corlitz, uh, which I really liked that one too. I might vote for that one, actually. Um, Arsenic and Adobo, I've heard, I know it's a mystery, it's not a thriller. I've heard it's got a lot of like really uh, heartwarming kind of family type stuff in there. Not interested in reading that though. Um, Lisa Jewell, The Night She Disappeared. This one I am interested in, and I, we knew it's a Lisa Jewell, like it's gonna be popular. A lot of this is just a popularity contest, so, you know, some of these I really, I just expect to be on here, and Lisa Jewell is one of them. I'm still interested in reading this. I may have to read that. Okay, Apples Never Fall. I'm not into Leanne Moriarty. Like, I'm not, not really interested in that, but I get it, I get it. All Her Little Secrets by Wanda M. Morris. I don't think I've heard of this. The cover looks great. Like that's definitely something I might have to look into. Not a Happy Family by Cheryl Lapina. This one is a mystery, not a thriller. I was disappointed. It wasn't awful, but I was disappointed. And then we have A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins, which I've heard pretty shit things about, if I'm being honest. So, hmm. Yeah, overall, some of these I really, I expected to be on here and some of them I've never even heard of. So this is interesting. Let's look at horror. Um, horror, 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 horror. Here we go. Okay, first we have All's Well by Mona Awad. Hi, I'm reading Mona Awad right now. I loved All's Well. Loved it, loved it. So happy that's on here. And this in horror. Interesting. The Hollows by Mark Edwards. No idea what this is. That I might have to look up. When the Reckoning Comes is on my list that I wanted to read by the end of the year, so. I'm glad that's up there. Uh, the Final Girl Support Group. I also liked this one. I'm not surprised it's on here at all. Cackle by Rachel Harrison. This one I wasn't really interested in. I didn't realize it was horror. I thought it was such just like a kitschy Halloween. I don't know if I thought it was romance or something, but maybe I'll look into that. The Book of Accidents. I still haven't finished. Don't judge me. My Heart is a Chainsaw. I have. I wanted to read, then I didn't want to read, then I did, then I didn't. I don't know what I don't know why it's on here. It's probably just because of Stephen Graham Jones, but I've heard shit about this. I've heard it's really slow. It's hard to keep up with. It's hard to read. <sighs> Not I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this one. Chasing the Boogeyman. Is this the one where the author made himself the lead character of the book? Because if it is, I just am turned off by that. I don't know. The Whispering Dead Gravekeeper Number One. Oh, this is Darcy Coates. I haven't read Darcy Coates yet. Maybe I should. Come with me, Ronald Malfi. 
no idea what that is either. Okay, Summer Sons, I've heard good things and bad things about. Lee Mandelo, Near the Bone, Christina Henry. I've heard good things about this. This one I might be interested in. This Thing Between Us by Gus Moreno. No idea what that is. That cover looks trippy as fuck. Um, yeah, I'll have to look into that. Bloodline by Jess Laurie. I like this cover. Again, no idea what this is. A Dowry of Blood, S.T. Gibson. I have heard good things about this, but I was not interested in it. I know it has something to do with, I think it has something to do with vampires and like mm, Dracula's wife or something. I thought this was a, why did I think this was a graphic novel? Is it? I don't know. That, I feel like that would have its own category, right? The Drowning Kind by Jennifer McMahon. I read this one. I liked this one. That was my first JM and I'm glad that's on here. Last House on Needless Street. I still need to read that one. That's also on my end of the year list. Another Stephen King, of course, we have later. This one I was interested in at one point, but I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really like Stephen King, but I'm still intrigued. I don't know. And then we have Where They Wait by Scott Carson. Never heard of that either, but that looks terrifying. I'll have to look into that. And Come For Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valente. And this one I'm super interested in. This is definitely one I want to read. Oh goodness. Okay. So there's our thriller and horror first round nominees for the Good Race Choice Award of 2021. Okay. All right, I really need to get some stuff done around the house. I need to clean. Today is, like I said, Monday. Is it Monday? Is today Monday? Or is today Tuesday? What the fuck day is it? Oh my God, today's Tuesday. <laughs> I lost a day somehow. I lost a day. Uh, it's Tuesday. Tomorrow, I'm going to see Hamilton. My husband got me a ticket as an early Christmas gift and the show's coming to town and I'm going, they were really expensive tickets. So we only got one. So I will be going solo and I have no qualms with that whatsoever. I'm, I'm just going to have a me night. I'm going to go watch Hamilton and probably drink some wine and have a fucking blast. I know it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. That pretty much gets us up to date. I'm going to continue reading Bunny. I'll try to finish this before Hamilton. That's the goal. And then we'll figure out what I'm going to read next. Okay, I'll catch up with you guys. Bye. I just finished Bunny. I feel weird. I feel really weird. I feel like I just woke up from a really fucking crazy dream. I feel really affected by this book. Um, and now I understand why no one can explain this because it is literally unexplainable. What the fuck? I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna have to sit with it for a little while. Like it starts off normal, relatable, and then it gets weird, and then it gets really weird, and then it gets really fucking weird really weird but i kind of i think i know what she was trying to do with this but i'm still i'm like in a haze right now oh my gosh if i had to compare this book to other things see i don't even know if it's true anymore because i thought this before i finished the book but what i thought was it's some kind of merging of stepford wives the craft and Alice in Wonderland. Do I still believe that? I don't know. I don't know. It's not witchy, don't get that from the craft, but like kind of the way the friendship works in that. And then also in Alice in Wonderland, just cause it's like really fucking trippy. I think what this is doing is talking about almost mental health. Maybe I'm just, I'm just connect mental health to, to everything. So maybe that's just me, but like, it's like talking about the gray area between artistry and insanity. It's kind of a view into that realm, if that makes any sense. I will say that Samantha, I just really like her as a character and I feel for her and I connect with her on a lot of different levels. I just feel so affected right now. I feel like I'm in a fog. Oh, it's so weird. Mm, I don't know if I love this or hate this. I don't know. I don't know y'all. So let's 
Oof, I'm gonna have to like sit on it before I give it a star rating because I just can't right now. Like I don't know. Oh, I don't know what's happening. I am going. I've done nothing today but read this book and like listen to it and to the to the point where I was just like sitting on the couch, like staring at the ceiling, like what's happening? <laughs> and I think I said before that like. It, the writing is not so that you don't understand what's happening. It is so that you don't understand what's happening, but it's intentionally, it's doing that intentionally. So not in a way that is pretentious and trying to pull one over on you. It's intentionally putting you into this headspace of um, Samantha, our main character, and she doesn't know what's happening. So you don't know what's happening either. But man, what a weird story. Gosh, just so strange. So I, pff, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna read next. <sighs> I don't feel human. I have like two hours before I have to leave for Hamilton. I need to get back in like a, I need to like get my shit together. Whew. Oh, thank you, Fluff. I haven't done anything today. Like I've done nothing today. I've been so lazy, but you know what? I think it's just one of those days where it's like, it's okay. Like you're allowed to have those days sometimes and that's all right. I get on myself a lot about being productive, especially now that I'm not working, but I can do it tomorrow. It's fine. I'm having a me day. It's fine. I have so many other books I want to read. I have a confession to make. I have not read Gone Girl. And I feel like such a hypocrite because I praise Gillian Flynn all the time and I love her so much, but I just can't motivate myself to read it because I've already watched the movie so many times. And so it's like, I know what's happening. And it's a 16 hour audiobook, And I'm like, well, I already know what's gonna happen. Am I really gonna love it that much more than the movie? I probably will, but it's just hard to motivate myself to get into it. So I really do wanna read that at some point. But I also really wanna get to When the Reckoning Comes by Latanya McQueen. I wanna get to They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. I wanna get to The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. There's just so many, so many, so many. So I think I'm just not gonna start anything at this moment because I need to like wake up, do some shit. Not even do some shit, but just like get back in like a human brain. So I'm gonna do that and then I will check in with you guys. I'll see, I'm not gonna obviously, I don't think I can get any footage of Hamilton and I'm pretty sure I, I don't know if I would get away with that, but um, I'll probably take you with me on the way and at least try to get a shot or two. I'll check in later. This has been weird. This is weird, it's all weird. Danver, see my oh, see my oh, 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 thank you, thank you for the cuddles. All right, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Okay, I'm back from Hamilton. Yay, it was amazing. It was not as good as the original cast, I'm not gonna lie, but very enjoyable. The guy that played Burr did, was kind of disappointing. He was a great actor, but his voice was just not. I mean, you're being compared to Leslie Odom Jr. So like, it was miles, miles apart. But otherwise it was really good. I could go into detail about it, but I'm sure. DM me if you wanna hear. <laughs> oh, I had an issue. Okay. Let me just tell you a little story. I, intermission rolled around and I was like, I'm gonna get a glass of wine. Like, you know, do my thing. I get to the line and it's like the whole length of the place to the point where people can't even get by because the lines are so long. So I'm like, all right, I'll just wait. It's taking forever. I finally get up to the front of the line and they're like, Ladies and gentlemen, the show will resume in three minutes. Please take your seats before the doors close. And when the doors close, you can't get in for like 15 minutes. Like they lock the doors for like 15 minutes. So I'm like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I get my line. These ladies in front of me, they're getting double. So they have like a full 16 ounce cup of wine. And I was like, 
they know what's up. Like these are the smart ones. I'm gonna follow what they do. And so I was like, I'm gonna have what they had. Give me a double. I'm gonna take it back to my seat. I'm gonna chill for the rest of the show. It was like $25 for this cup of wine. So I finally get it. I squeeze in before the doors close. I go to my seat and then the usher saw me and hunted down her manager and had her manager come to me and tell me there were no food or drinks allowed inside. I was like, excuse me, bitch. Like I just paid $25 for this and waited in line for the entire intermission so that I could have it. I got a double so I wouldn't have to go get more. What do you want me to do with it? Like, can I get my money back? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what do I do? So I ran out and like the other ushers are holding the doors, waiting for it to start, waiting for it to close. I'm watching this lady like, don't you dare close that. What do I do with it? I'm not gonna waste $25. So I just start chugging. Of course, I, I couldn't finish it in time. But second I saw those doors close, I like threw it in the trash and like booked it back in. But I was fucking pissed. Like that's stupid. Why? Why even sell wine if you can't get it and drink it in the time allotted before you go back in? It's dumb. It's dumb. Anyway. The show itself was great. Oh, I have book mail. Book mail. So let's open this. This I bought. This isn't anything that's like a gift or anything like that. I, I know what it is, but I'm sharing it with you. And I'm really excited. I waited to open it. I did buy Bunny. I think I've decided that I like Bunny. But we'll talk about more about that in the wrap up. Oh, I think it's so pretty. Wow, it's super floppy. Okay, I also got, oh, I'm very excited for this one. In my dreams, I hold a knife. Yay! So I really wanted to get the audiobook for this, but of course, there's no freaking audiobook. I just feel like I'm missing out on this one. So I was like, I need to get this damn book so I can read it. Six friends, one college reunion, one unsolved murder. In my dreams, I hold a knife by Ashley Winstead. Very excited to finally have this one. And then lastly, I've got this book for Thrill to the Weekend. I'm gonna try to wait to read it until then, but I'm very excited for this. And that is Comfort Me with Apples. Honestly, I don't know what it's about. I didn't know what it was about at one point. Sophia was made for him, her perfect husband. She can feel it in her bones. He is perfect. Let me guess, he's not perfect. Denver, why do you always have to be running around when I'm filming? Their home together in Arcadia Gardens is perfect. Everything is perfect. Uh-oh, it's not gonna end well. It's just that he is away so much, so often. He works so hard, she misses him, and he misses her. He says he does, so it must be true. He's the perfect husband and everything is perfect. Ugh, I don't like where this is going, but sometimes Sophia wonders about things, strange things, dark things. The look on her husband's face when he comes back from a long business trip. The questions he will not answer, the locked basement, she is never allowed to enter. Are there bodies in it? And whenever she asks the neighbors, they can't quite meet her gaze. But everything is perfect, isn't it? Nah, nah, nah. So it sounds domestic. I am all about it. Yes, I wanna read this so badly. This is a novella. It's like barely 100 pages. So that I'm going to read for a thrill to the weekend. All right, so there's my books. Let's talk about what I'm reading right now, I am more than halfway done with When the Reckoning Comes. Can you see it? Can you see it? By Latanya McQueen. This is black horror. It is set in the South, I think, actually um, North Carolina. We're following Mira, Jesse, and Celine. They are they were three best friends back in the day when they were growing up in school. Today, Mira is going back to the South for Celine's wedding. So in the past, something happened. There was this there's this old plantation that is in this neighborhood that they live, and there's a lot of rumors and stories, a lot of weird stuff happening around that, and. Celine and Jesse went to check it out when they were kids and well, they were like teenagers. Something happened. Jesse got falsely accused of murder. Mira tried to help him, but nobody believed her. Jesse and Mira, I should mention, are black. Celine is white. Celine used to get kind of made fun of for hanging out with the black kids, but nonetheless, they were all besties. But until this event happened and they kind of went their own ways after that. 
And then present day, Celine's getting married at the same plantation. She has a plantation themed wedding. And this place is supposed to reignite the economy of this small town. They've redone everything. They have reenactments of masters and slaves. And like, it's really weird. And Jesse and Mira are like the only white people at this wedding. And it's freaking them out. And meanwhile, all the white people don't see anything wrong with this. They're just like, oh, it's so beautiful. It's gorgeous. Stuff starts going off the walls. It gets real dark real quick. So yeah, I'm more than halfway through with this. I really like the writing. I just looked at it and was like, how far along am I? And thought I was like maybe a quarter of the way in. Like it is flying by. I started it last night. I don't know how much I read of it last night or listened to of it, but I must have listened to a lot because I, I didn't think I'd gotten that far. It's really going pretty fast. I'm very intrigued. I, I thought this was gonna be a situation where the ghosts of enslaved people, black people who have been tortured, are going to come back for revenge against the white people. But now I'm feeling like it's dangerous for Mira and Jesse being there. And maybe their ghosts will confuse them for people of their time. I don't know. I don't know, but it's definitely interesting and I'm enjoying it a lot, actually. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I don't have a whole lot to do. I may finish this today, so we'll see. I will check back in with you when I am done. 10 a.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah, let's come to the town. Yes. Ooh. Hi. Tomorrow. But I bet he wishes it could be today. Yeah, I'm sure he does. But that's not gonna happen. It has to be tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, she is. Okay, so we need to talk about when the reckoning comes. So I finished this story. I really enjoyed this one. It's absolutely black horror. I liked our main character, Mira. I liked Jesse as well. It did kind of follow where I thought it was going to go, but I don't think this is one of those books that you're looking for the twist endings and all of that, because you kind of know with black horror what's happening. And I think it's really important for people like me, white people in general, to read those kind of stories because it's a glimpse into the lives of other people that we can't relate to. There's no way we can relate to it. I can't discuss how the representation was, obviously, because I'm not a person of color. I'm not black. I don't have any, literally none of my ancestors were ever slaves. Like I can say that with absolute certainty. And so... You know, I really don't have much say in it, but as far as my perspective being a white woman reading this, I found it compelling. You know, I definitely empathize with our characters and understand that they've gone through a lot. And even though people living today were never slaves, obviously, there are still implications of this that that we see throughout our culture and the white supremacy that is built into our system in general. So I just think it's a it's a really important thing to read and I did like it. I thought the coolest part, the part that makes this different from other books that I've read is the whole plantation setting and the reenactments because it was, really, it was just really weird to see how Mira and Jesse perceived this as two black people versus how every all of the white people perceived all of these reenactments because they're like, oh cool, part of history, everything's so beautiful and we get to see this history go down and then Mira and Jesse are like, why are we being like pounded in the head by this history that is torture to us? You know, it's torture to our ancestors, to our family, to us. And now people are profiting off of this, which is just not okay. And it's not there for an educational reason. It's there just to make money from. So they are um, taking advantage of that, which is which is not okay. But anyway, overall, I really enjoyed this story. I highly recommend it. So really quick, let's just review the other two books that I read in this vlog. We started out with Tangerine by Christine Mangan. Ended up giving this three stars. It was so-so. It wasn't great. It wasn't super twisty. Kind of did the same thing that I was expecting it to. It's hard to recommend, but I think if you want a thriller that's not in your typical setting it's not your typical like domestic thriller it is about obsession if you like that if you like the 1950s setting although you know you didn't really have a whole lot of references to the 1950s aside from the fact that we don't have modern conveniences here like cell phones and things like that it is very much more character driven it's about the people and they meet their interactions that sort of thing and it's got an interesting setting in morocco as well so if you're interested in those things maybe pick this up this might be for you 
And then also we read Bunny. I'm not even gonna hold this up because you can't see it because of the light. I do wanna say that as far as Bunny goes, I can't in good conscience recommend this to literally anyone. It's like a blanket recommendation because it's just one of those books that needs a very particular rater. But after much thought and contemplation, I really do enjoy this book. I think I'm going to give it four and a half stars, probably my favorite of the three that I read. I know it's 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 weird, but there's something about Mona Awad's writing style that just gets to me. It speaks to me, kind of like how I feel about Matt Haig. Their writing style is just like, I connect with it. I don't know what it is, but I feel like we have some kind of alliance. Like they have some kind of alliance between us. Like I understand her and she understands me without even knowing me or knowing that I exist, which is the cool thing about reading in general. Overall, I, I can't tell anyone to read this or not to read it. Like if you're down for just a really, really weird book and you just want to see what it's about like I did, then maybe check it out. You know, find out if that's for you or not. I just really adore Mona Awad after reading these two books and I'll probably read anything she comes out with in the future. Sorry, my family's getting ready to pay for Thanksgiving. And so there's a lot going on right now. For my next vlog, I'm going to pick a few more books that were also on the Goodreads Choice Awards list under the thriller and horror categories, most likely, and just read those because either I didn't know about them and I just found out about them from this list, or I've been intrigued and the fact that it's on the list is making me want to actually push through and try it. I'm not going to read all of them, but I do want to read some more of them. So stay tuned for that. If you've listened, if you've watched through this whole video and you like this kind of content, Content, I really would appreciate it if you could subscribe, hit that like button, and don't forget to check out all my other socials. I'll put them down here somewhere. I appreciate you guys so much. If you're new to this channel, I've just gotten like a whole bunch of new people that have showed up from Jacqueline and Beth's channels. Thank you for being here and look forward to getting to know you. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you're interested in any of them, or of course, I'm always open to book suggestions. So that's going to be it for today. I appreciate you guys so much. Again, don't forget that life is short. So read Riley and I will see you next time. Bye.